Hi, this is Sarah Siddiqui, and I'm here for my uh, presentation uh, from the Elwood Public Library. Uh, so again, this is Dr. Sarah Siddiqui, and I'm here on behalf of Elwood Public Library. Thank you so much. Uh, for allowing me to do this every month and presenting on an important topic. This month is um, important and uh, it is covering some sensitive material. So I just wanted to make sure um, before everybody kind of um, starts watching it, it is it may have some um, trigger warnings. There's nothing graphic in it, but definitely we're gonna be talking about some sensitive topics because um, this month's topic is called uh, Tips for Parents, How to Avoid Sexual Harassment and Abuse of Children Online and in Person. And it's really uh, just giving tips regarding how you can discuss with your children um, if, you know, and how you uh, um, can make them aware or to make sure that the conversation takes place um, and that they share information with you uh, as early as possible if there is um, a possible abuse situation going on. So um, disclosures, I have no disclosures to identify and uh, please discuss any specific concerns with your health provider. And this presentation is for informational purposes only. So please talk to your healthcare provider if there's anything that you wish to discuss with them. Again, I thank the Elwood Public Library and also um, Eric for helping me to uh, sometimes edit and put some of the pictures on the bottom. So thank you so much. And again, there's gonna be um, some sensitive material being discussed. So I just wanted to uh, give you a fair warning a little bit. Okay, so um, some definitions. Um, harassment is uh, when you make someone um, feel like they're different or um, being down on themselves. You uh, kind of um, uh, maybe um, make their self-confidence um, a little bit less. Uh, bullying uh, is also similar where you, um, you know, a group of people uh, may be uh, harassing or uh, making fun of someone else based on their um, characteristic or um, something personal. Sexual harassment and bullying is uh, when there is some um, type of abuse of sexual nature. Um, definitely uh, adult towards children could, could occur, but it could also occur male to female. Um, sometimes in power, um, in, in differences of power, so in areas where there's an employer, employee, or uh, student teacher, um, you know, different co-workers, things like that. So these are all abusive ways of treating others, um, trying to insult, demean, exclude, or shame. And sometimes this can be done in um, a sexual manner using jokes, gestures, and sometimes by a text or social media. So why should we um, discuss this uh, important but uncomfortable topic? So according to the CDC, uh, there are some estimates that one in six boys and one in four girls uh, are sexually abused before the age of 18. And according to the US Department of Justice, only 10% of perpetrators were strangers to the child and 23% of perpetrators were children themselves. Uh, so this is uh, quite concerning. So I just have some tips for parents um, about how to start discussing with children. Uh, how do you talk to your kids about it? How do you initi initiate the conversation? Uh, it's really important to start early. Uh, so before kindergarten, before they start school, even preschool, uh, I know in my office, uh, when I have to examine patients, even the youngest of children, I always try to let them know that it's their body, they're the boss of it. And sometimes when I do have to examine a private area, I try to uh, have the parent in the room at all times. And I try to explain uh, what I'm doing. I wear gloves and I make sure that the child is uh, in a comfortable spot and also make sure that I have their consent. And that's really important. If children feel uncomfortable, then I don't proceed. 
And if children feel uncomfortable with certain people, relatives, friends, then listen to them. If they're telling you they don't want to hug a certain person for during the holidays, or they don't want to um, be alone with that person, pick up on that and um, you know address it or listen to them. Don't force them into a situation that they don't feel comfortable in, uh, regardless of how small you think that the matter is. So um, you want to talk about um, body parts early. You want to make sure that uh, starting as early as possible that you identify different body parts by the correct name. Uh, this is something that uh, is very important to use the proper names and use the proper terminology for the different parts of our bodies. Uh, because when children may need to tell you uh, regarding a certain circumstance that may have happened, you want them to be able to identify which body parts uh, could be um, in question or that which body parts were of concern to them. So you want to make sure that you teach that to the children early, to your children early. Um, and again, teach some teach um, children that some body parts are private. So uh, what I try to tell um, my children and even in my office, uh, I always say private area and for girls, uh, in private area is the parts that are covered by a bathing suit. So I try to let them know that when they go swimming, their private areas are covered, right? So those are your um, areas that you uh, don't need to um, show anyone. No one is allowed to, uh, look there unless they're a parent or they give consent and um, these are your private areas and so it's really important to um, discuss that again I can't stress this enough that you want to discuss this early and often so start young Let's see and then um, talk about boundaries um, so you want to make sure that you uh, instill in your children that if they feel uncomfortable in any situation, so I'm not just talking about a possible abusive situation, but if they're uncomfortable, if they're shy, if they don't want to, um, you know, if, if they don't uh, uh, want to meet someone or if they don't want to be alone with someone, you take that seriously and make sure that you, um, uh, you know, protect them in that situation. Don't force them, don't make them go, uh, you know hug them or do or do an activity with someone that they're uncomfortable with and the fact that your child was able to tell you that they're uncomfortable with that person or that they don't feel comfortable being alone with that person is significant and you want to take that very very seriously um and again talking about boundaries is really important i know i um you know i try again try to talk about this uh, at every single uh, well visit and I make sure that children know that they're the boss of their body and they're the ones that um, decide uh, decide um, you know who's around it. So you want to tell children that body secrets are not okay so a lot of times um, perpetrators or possible um, abusers and you know a lot of times unfortunately it could be someone that they know. Uh, or um, someone that the parent knows, and they kind of start talking to them, um, you know, maybe secretly or sharing secrets or sharing things that, you know, they're kind of telling them that only they know. So body secrets are not okay. Uh, you wanna make sure that your children know that to tell you uh, everything that's going on, to not keep secrets from you. And the important way to do that is to establish lines of communication nice and early and make sure that you believe them and trust them when they tell you things. That's really, really important. Uh, no matter who it is or who they're telling you about, um, children don't usually, you know, young children especially, don't generally tend to make things up um, regarding some of these things that they might share with you. They, they're not going to make up a friend or a relative um, you know, discussing these things with them. So if they tell you something, it is really, really important that you take it seriously and listen. Um, this is very important. Teach children no one should take pictures of their body parts, especially in the private areas. 
so no taking pictures, nobody else should be taking pictures, and no sending pictures, um, no receiving pictures. So if that's the case, if they come across anything, even online or in social media, uh, you want to make sure that you have that established line of communication that they can come to you for that, and they can discuss it with you. Uh, and then you may want to um, protect them and discuss with them uh, you know what to do you may want to call the authorities if, if that's happened or if they <clears throat> are sharing something with you that shouldn't have been shared to them uh, you definitely want to get the authorities involved and make sure that um, your child knows that they are not in trouble but they should let you know what's going on um, and again, teach your children to get out of an uncomfortable situation if they're in someone else's home or uh, they're visiting someone and they don't feel comfortable anymore, they wanna come home, make sure that you establish a way for them to communicate with you so that they can get out of the situation. So a code word or, um, you know, that they can, um, that they can kind of let people know that they're not comfortable if they don't feel comfortable saying it outright. Again, you want to have a code word that children can use if they feel unsafe or want to be picked up. So you want to make sure that they are, um, that, that you have something that you can tell them. Uh, if they send you a, maybe a code or a um, text message, and then you can kind of call them and say, okay, we need to get, we need to, you know, pick up somebody or I need to pick you up early. You have a doctor's appointment, whatever it is. Uh, you want to make sure that you are aware that they want to get out of that situation and you want to help them to get out. Uh, and um, you want to do it uh, safely and quickly. And again, these are all ways um, that things that you want to discuss with your children over a repeated period of time and multiple times. And you also want to, I can't um, stress this enough, that you want to do these conversations on a repeated basis. So, um, and there's many um, resources available for how to talk to children about, um, about unsafe situations. There's many resources available to um, help you to discuss with children, um, you know, identify uh, or, or make, sure that, um, make sure that you recognize uh, if something is going on. So I have some resources at the end too. Um, and tell your children that they will never be in trouble if they tell you a body secret or a secret that someone else shared with them or told them that they should keep secret. These are um, grooming behaviors when adults or even other children tell other children to keep a secret, uh, especially to do with their body, possible uh, touching or viewing. Uh, so these are things that um, people use to try to get children to not say anything and not tell anyone. Uh, again, these are very sensitive topics, but you do wanna make sure that you speak to children regarding this and make sure that they feel that you will um, not be upset if they speak to you about something like this. And you wanna be prepared uh, to act if your child is telling you that, that something has happened. And this is very important to tell children a body touch may tickle or feel good. So a lot of books kind of say good touch and bad touch. And this can be confusing because there's really sometimes it, it's hard to say, uh, you know, whether it's good or bad, but the term secret touch could be used a little bit better in terms of, you know, um, in, in terms if the child is feeling uncomfortable and knows that this shouldn't be happening or this is not something that should be happening, that, that is maybe a little bit easier for the child to identify and tell someone about. Uh, again, these are really important topics uh, or important things that you want to um, speak to your children about. And then, um, and you want to make sure that you're letting your children know that these rules apply with people that they know and even um, with other children. So anyone should not be um, 
uh, looking or touching at the private area, even in the office when I start examining them, I always say that I examine them with your parents in the room. Um, even doctors wear, you know, they wear gloves before they're examining the private area and we always ask for consent. Uh, and, um, and, and it is really important to know that even um, in a situation where it's in an examination, consent is still required, no matter how old the child is, nothing should be forced so that the children um, know that, um, that there's not a situation where they need to um, share uh, or show their body if they're not comfortable. So this is really important and you want to stress it in all different types of situations so that they will be aware if there is something that's irregular or not normal uh, that they can share with you right away. Um, and again, I just wanted to um, say that this has, you know, this is a very difficult topic. Um, it's why it's difficult to discuss and it is something that is very, very important. Um, I have some references uh, just in, um, in over the next slide or so that you can kind of look at. So um, healthychildren.org is a good reference. There's Child um, uh, Mind Institute is also a good reference. So, um, and again, one conversation is not enough and you wanna discuss often and early. So yes, so this is the kidshealth.org. There is also healthychildren.org um, and then the Child Mind Institute. Uh, this is where um, I got some of the, the, a lot of the information that I just shared with you. They have a really good um, website and there's also other um, websites within this that have some important teaching points. So this was more of just um, something that you should, you should kind of go over and get into and practice talking with um, your children multiple times often. And, um, you know, there's no age that's too early, but there's also no age that's too late. You want to bring it up um, if you haven't already. And I urge you to, um, to, to start the conversation sooner rather than later. And also um, always talk to us or your family doctor, your pediatrician, if you do have any concerns, we do have ways to report and what to do. If you are in a situation where you found out that something's going on, um, we can help guide you and um, make sure that you get the correct resources. So um, I think that's almost it. Thank you so much. I, um, this is a really, really important topic and I'm glad I got a chance to touch on it. Uh, and I and I hope that you got something out of it as well. I hope that you use this information uh, to your benefit and make sure if you have any questions, you can always reach out and um, ask me anytime. You can reach the reference desk and you can leave a question there for me or you can um, find me around town and I will be happy to discuss anything that you need to. Uh, I will be happy to discuss anything that you want. Um, with you. So thank you very much. Thank you to the Elwood Public Library and I hope this uh, you know this presentation helped.